In Revit, sometimes it makes sense to bring in CAD work into a Revit model, but when doing this, it's important to keep in mind that there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. In this video, I'll cover three different situations that typically come up when bringing CAD work into Revit. The first one is bringing in CAD backgrounds, such as a site base. Second, I'll cover how to create your own simple components from CAD drawings that already exist. Uh, an example of this would be furniture or HVAC equipment. Since most of these items already exist somewhere as a CAD drawing, there's no point in redrawing it just for Revit. And finally, I'll cover how to create a detail component. Detail components are used in sections and callout and detail drawings. And they differ from regular components in that since they only show up in one specific view, they don't coordinate with any other views in the same way that regular components can. And I'll explain that um, later on. So starting out to bring in a CAD background, such as a site base, um, in, the, in the model, first go to the Insert tab. And you never want to import CAD uh, drawing directly into the Revit model, because that brings in its layers and everything with it. Instead, you want to link a CAD file in. So to link the CAD, choose the Link CAD button under the Insert tab. Browse to find the file. And when you select it, there are a few options you can choose for settings. Under colors, I always choose black and white. For layers, you can bring in all the layers of the CAD drawing, just the visible ones. Or if you click specify, uh, you'll later have a window that pops up um, where you can specify the individual layers to bring in to your, CAD, your Revit model. I'll choose visible for now. For import units, I always leave it as auto detect. For positioning, um, the default is going to be center to center. But what I found is with civil drawings, um, they're often drawn far from the true zero, zero, and they can be hard to find when bringing them into Revit. So uh, I usually will do manual center so that I can choose. Finally, um, for the place at, um, it's going to be placed at the level one, the ground plane. Click open to bring the file in, and you can hover and then click to place the CAD background. You can precisely place it by selecting dragging and using the align tools to align certain reference points such as grid lines. Once you have it in place, you want to pin it down so that uh, it doesn't accidentally get moved by first selecting it and under the modify tab, choose the pin icon. Finally, uh, there are some graphic issues uh, to address. If you're noticing that contour lines are running through your building, it could be for a couple reasons. First, you need to make sure that you model a floor in your building. Because since these, this line work is actually placed at the ground level, if there's no floor, there's nothing to cover up the contour lines running through your building. Also, with civil CAD drawings, usually contour lines are actually drawn at their true elevation. And these elevation lines may be hovering above your model. If I go to the 3D view, you can see that the, the line work is drawn at my level. But zooming out, you can see that the contour lines have actually been placed at true elevation and they're obscuring the model below. So if you're only intending to use this CAD background as a flat background for your model, you may need to flatten the drawing or somehow also modify it um, to make it appear. Uh, finally, one trick too is by selecting the drawing, you can see that it's at the base level under its properties. Um, if you offset it below the level a couple inches, um, it will sink below your building floor and make it appear correctly as well. So going to my first floor plan, you'll notice that the CAD background is still there. That's because it's actual line work placed in 3D space, and so it's coordinating with all the views. If you don't want to see it here, you can always turn it off with the views visibility and graphics by going to view and then choose visibility and graphics. And under the imported categories tab, you can um, find the drawing that's linked in and unchecking the box hides it from the view. You also have the ability, going back into visibility and graphics, to individually turn on and off the, the layers of the drawing by expanding the file and clicking on their checkboxes here. Finally, when it comes to managing the file that's linked in uh, to the Revit project, if you need to update or reload the file, 
You do this by going to the Links Manager located under the Manage tab and then choose Manage Links. Here on the CAD Formats tab, you'll see any CAD drawings that have been linked into the model and you can select them by selecting it in its first column which highlights the entire row. Here you can update and reload updated files by clicking the reload button. If the file has changed location, click reload from to browse to a new location and clicking unload will unload it from the project which makes it disappear everywhere but still keeps a placeholder for you to reload it um, later down the road. So my first floor plan, I probably want to hide the site. in this view, just to make it a little more clear. Uh, secondly, for the second topic in the video, um, to create a component, uh, in this example, um, I'll create a uh, furniture component, a, a table and a few chairs. But it really could be anything from pl plumbing to electrical to uh, landscape. A anything that you have a CAD drawing of that you don't want to redraw and recreate in Revit to save a little time. So. To create a new simple component using a CAD drawing, go to the big R at the top of the screen, and we're going to create a new family by going New and then Family. Here, browse to the Family Templates, and we're going to create uh, it from a generic model template. When you hit Enter, a new empty family will open up in the Family Editor, and you can see a reference plane has been laid out um, defining a center origin for the model. And this uh, generic model it is its own 3D model. It has, in the browser, you can see it has a floor plan, and it has a back, front, left, and right. But since we're creating uh, this component just from a CAD drawing, we just want it to show up in a floor plan view. So we need to make sure that we're in the floor plan view when we place this CAD symbol in here so that it shows up properly. So to bring in the CAD symbol, go to the Insert tab at the top, choose Import CAD this time, find the file, in this case table and shares, and my settings are black and white for colors, and this time I'll bring in visible layers and position it uh, manual center. Bringing it in, I can hover it and then click to place, and when you select the CAD component, um, I'm going to just rotate it to bring it into place, and I'm going to make use of the um, defined origin at its center by moving it into position, by centering it. Before you go any further, it's important now to change the component's category. And the reason that this is important is because in AutoCAD, you use layers to distinguish between different items. Since Revit doesn't have layers, the only way it knows what this thing is is by its category. So um, I'm going to change its category by going to the Home tab and choose the Family Category and Parameters button, which has a manila folder as part of its icon, and change it from Generic Model, in this case, to Furniture and click OK. Doing that will allow me to um, be able to tell this thing apart from other components in the Revit model. Once I've done that, um, I want to explode all the line work and turn it into Revit line work. So I will select the um, Revit component, or excuse me, the, the CAD symbol, go to explode and choose full explode, clear the warning, select all the line work, and under the line style, pull down menu, I will swap it out for uh, the Revit furniture style instead of the um, CAD layer that it was on. Once all the line work has been converted to Revit line work, one last thing to do before saving it is you want to place masking regions around everything. That's because you want to turn this into a solid symbol that isn't see-through and doesn't let um, other geometry show through, for example, a floor finish. So to create a masking region all this, go to the Annotate tab, choose Masking Region, and it brings you into an edit mode where instead of drawing it out um, freehand, choose the Pick Lines tool, which is an arrow with a green line, and just select all the geometry in here to uh, create your masking region. When it comes to complicated geometry like this chair, you'll notice some broken lines. And it's important as you go all the way around to create a closed loop, so you may have to trim these lines as you go. I'll fast forward uh, to get through this process. You see that once I've uh, created all my closed loops, um, I can hit finish to close out of the boundary, and it's created the solid masking region, which has created a solid symbol for me.
that is no longer transparent. So once you have uh, all the geometry laid out and drawn, um, save it out by going to the big R, do a file save as, family, and uh, it's important to keep a good naming convention. Uh, the naming convention I follow is to do the project name. So you know it's been uh, developed specifically for this project. Underscore and then category, in this case furniture, so that all the categories um, stay grouped together in your browser. And then finally a description of what it is. Hit save and then load it into the project. And now it's free to place. And if you've correctly placed it on the correct uh, category, when you go to the visibility and graphics, you should be able to hide it and um, override it uh, using its category. Finally, the third topic for the video is creating detail components. And in Revit, it's going to be tempting to draw your sections using line work, but it's actually very important uh, to keep all of your detail of a section or call out um, grouped into its little parts and pieces in order to keep the model smart. And to illustrate this, I'll go to an existing wall section and an existing Revit project uh, to point this out. You can see in this wall section, um, the Drawing is composed of a combination of 3D model elements, such as this roof and wall, and also 2D detail components um, that were placed in this view to represent blocking, plywood sheathing, parapet cap, and, and other pieces. And it's, it's, it's easy to um, just draw this out if you were in CAD with line work, but in Revit it's important to keep these things as separate detail components so that Revit knows what these parts are and it makes it much easier um, to annotate and keep track of later down the road. So going back to uh, my project, if for example I want to um, go to this wall section and create a detail component out of existing CAD detail I have for this window system mullion, um, I can create my own detail component by going back to the big R and using a similar process for other components I'll go to new and then family, but this time um, I'll create it from a detail component template and hit enter. Here it looks just like a, opening up a regular generic component, but you'll notice that in the browser there is no elevation views. Um, it's only a 2D drawing, and so there's only one place that you can uh, bring in all your, your CAD imports and your, your line work. Also, there's no need to change its category out because a detail item is its own category. So to bring in a CAD symbol, uh, use the same process. Go to Insert, Import CAD, find your file, in this case, a mullion. Drop it in. And you'll notice that uh, graphically it doesn't look very right. That's because it's still set to the, the CAD layers. So I will select it, do a full explode, grab all the line work, and swap it out for the detail items line work in Revit. Here you'll also want to create a masking region around the shape so that it's not see-through and it blocks and obscures other elements um, behind it. So once you've exploded the, the CAD and changed out its line work, um, save it out. And following the naming convention here, I'll call it project name, and this time detail, and then uh, description. Save, load it into the project, and place. 